and other people tonight who see and hear things the rest of us don't. The Air Guitar Championships, including competitor Bjorn Turok. Get it? Bjorn Turok. <laughs> All that and more now on Countdown. The history of the air guitar is an elusive prey. Most of the competitors in the World Air Guitar Championships, yeah, the World Air Guitar Championships, think it became big after it was featured in the 1989 movie Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> 22 years ago next month, the New York Times had a lengthy reminiscence by a staffer who waxed nostalgic for the good old days, his teenage years in the 70s, before air guitar became, quote, institutionalized in, quote, the form of Concerts, unquote. Our number one story in the countdown. Boy, has that ship sailed. Time for the fifth annual U.S. Air Guitar Championships and special coverage from our special coverage correspondent, Willie Geist. Willie, good evening. Good evening to you, Keith. Given that history and given the fact that we invented rock and roll, you'd think the United States would dominate competitive air guitaring. Not so. An American has stood at the top of the medal stand only twice in the history of the Air Guitar World Championships. A national shame, indeed. Last night, this country's best and brightest air guitarists gathered at the Fillmore in New York City for the U.S. Air Guitar Finals where they competed for the right to restore the United States' place in the world. This is the future of America. Fortunately, it's just the future of American air guitar. Air guitar, rock and roll, as far as I'm concerned, were born in the United States. Yeah. And, and it's been said that if there's one thing the United States deserves to dominate, it's air guitar. This is a Hall of Fame right here, basically, of the last few years of air guitaring. And, uh, you know, much respect to everybody else, but I think I've got airness. And that's something that you can't really calculate or train or, you know, you're born with it or you're not. The competition has a decidedly Olympic feel. There is a strict substance testing policy. If no alcohol is detected in your system, you're subject to investigation. And a panel of judges scores the air guitarist on a variety of criteria. I look for uh, uh, male nudity. I enjoy uh, big points for that. I'm really focused on this uh, elusive quality of airness. The crowd favorite on this night is local New York air guitar legend William Ocean. If I don't walk away with a U.S. title and at least three to four broken bones, I haven't done my job tonight. In a judging scandal that rocked air guitaring to its core, Ocean finished second by fractions of a point at last year's nationals and missed the chance to represent his country in Finland. This year, he would get another shot at his nemesis, defending champ Hot Licks Houlihan. Hot Licks was strong, but Ocean would not be denied. A virtuoso performance backed by the partisan crowd of Wave Riders gave the hometown boy the national title. They come to the show, they want to have a good time, they want to ride the wave, and I try every single time to set them on that wave. But with the international championships still on the horizon, Ocean's celebration was short-lived. I'm focusing for the next month. I go into hibernation. I, I, I go in, I practice, I sweat, I shred. And when I come out and I take that flight to Finland and I get there, it's a tsunami. It's a tsunami. And honestly, there's no doubt in my mind, the U.S. will win the world title this year. The William Ocean tsunami hits the shores of Finland beginning on September 5th. If you can't make it to Scandinavia, you can catch Ocean and the rest of them in the documentary film Air Guitar Nation. It's excellent, and it comes out on DVD later this month, Keith. Willie Geist, and yes, the University of Helsinki has an exhibition in which if you play air guitar while wearing special gloves, you actually produce guitar <laughs> sounds, which seems to defeat the purpose of it. Thanks, Willie. All right, Keith. That's Countdown for this, the 1,570th day since the Declaration of Mission Accomplished in Iraq. I'm Keith Olbermann. All right, what the hell? Good night and good luck.